Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the podcast. I, I didn't say that quite right, did I? Oh well. Uh, part two of Justin Timberlake. The uh, he just he's always left a a bad taste in my mouth. Not that I've ever actually tasted him, but he just I don't know the way he abandoned his. His boys and in sync, and the way he has been so reticent to get back together with them. The whole uh, fiasco with the filming of the homeless people for amusement. The you know, there's been a lot of rumors about his personal life as of late, and I think he thinks of himself as a better actor than he really is. He is he a good performer? Yeah. I'm, 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 you know, straight up. He's a very good performer. And I've always said that he's very good on Saturday Night Live. And he is a talk show guest that you want to have. Because he's willing to participate in whatever chicanery you would like to participate in. But it doesn't mean I have to like him. So, so when we last left, at the end of part one, <clears throat> we were talking about... Uh, Justin Timberlake taking a ride on the Lindsay Lohan fire crotch and how that all went for him. I can't recall off the top of my head if, if he was on Lindsay's list, but that list, when did that list come out? Did it come out before or after that? I can't remember if he was on the list, but on her handwritten list or if it was, but she, yeah, it definitely happened. Uh, so Jessica Biel and Justin started dating about 2007. And as I said in part one, it's the whole sticky, sticky, sticky thing. And there are just a lot of people who try that. One of the people that, that I thought about who tries it, I didn't mention in part one, uh, Alexander Skarsgård, he tries it to varying degrees of success. I think that it's kind of important to him. I think it's just there's a, a bunch of people who try it, and when you try something like that, it doesn't usually work. Darren, Chris, that's an example of where it works, where you're trying to to find something like that, where maybe it's a little bit forced or a little bit fake, and it works out well. And then there's times that it just it's horrible. So he and Jessica start dating about 2007. And there was pretty much Justin starts cheating with Olivia Munn. And Olivia Munn, of course, uh, if any, this is kind of a match made in heaven in the sense that Olivia loves a, a publicity relationship. That 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 is her thing. That's, that's her raison d'etre. I sounded like Thomas Ravenel when I said that, and that just makes me want to throw up in my mouth a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so he had you know, kind of cheated with Olivia. That would have been a good relationship, I think, because they both would have understood the benefits of it. Because I don't think that Olivia with Aaron Rodgers, if you compare, if, if, Ju if Justin Timberlake and Olivia Munn had got married rather than the other, I don't know because then Olivia Munn maybe she wouldn't have done as much work because she's been free pretty much to do what she wants because when you're dating Aaron Rodgers and you know I use that in quotes he's he's gone most of the time plus he was in Green Bay she's in Los Angeles that is the the perfect it'd be, it's the perfect built-in excuse as to why Oh, yeah, we don't, well, you know, of course, we still love each other, but, you know, he's an athlete, and it's four or five months, and, yeah, I'll see him at the end of the season, and sure enough, you see him at the end of the season for a week, and then everybody's like, oh, they're great. So Jessica finds out about this Olivia Munn situation and decides that perhaps she's had enough uh, with Justin, but... Then she second-guessed herself because her career was starting to go south. <laughs> it was. 
it was. This is not the 2007, 2008, Jessica. This is not even the, what was it, the Kevin James Adam Sandler <laughs> movie where, she, where they were trying to play a, a married gay couple. Yeah. So this is the 2012 Jessica Biel, who, like I said, I, I really need to do a little hour on Jessica Biel because there are so many good stories. So many good stories, but this is all about Justin. So Jessica, you know, could use some time with with Justin, and the next thing you know, they get back together and they're married in in a second. And they did the whole Italy thing, which is where a lot of uh, kind of arranged marriages go. Hello, Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, right? They like much like with the Britney Spears thing. There is a legend to apparently how they met. And again, it makes her look poorly. I feel as as if Justin has a team that's designed to make him look as good as possible and the person he's with look as poorly as possible, even if they're together. And if they split, then it's just going to look worse. They... They said, the the story goes that she stalked him. That she was just, she just couldn't be without him. That she just stalked him. And that she uh, arranged for Justin to get her phone number that night. And all this kind of stuff. Now Justin says, no, no, no. I'm the one who chased her because he's trying to sound like this. But his PR people, the people where... The stories that get repeated over and over and over again rather than his one interview on the subject. They all say that she stalked him. And then they make her look worse by saying after she did all of this, after she gave him the number that he refused to call. And that she, quote unquote, went into a mini meltdown because he wouldn't call. Really? Uh, and that's not the Jessica Biel I know. Then, uh, the actress gave a speech that she went and drove to his house after he failed to call. Okay. What is wrong with that story? What, what do we think is wrong with that story? We have a phone number. We have a first time meeting at this party. We have this first time meeting at this Golden Globes party where we already know that there was a 40 minute throwdown with Justin punching his fist into a table or whatever. This is not really the, and that was reported by actual media people who, regardless of what you may think about the mm, juiciness of the reporting, at least it's accurate when they actually do report something. So I'm going to take their word for the fact about the 40 minutes. Does this seem, you know, the whole stalking and I made sure they got the phone number. Okay. Well, let's say she did the stalking and she made sure that he got the phone number. That's all. So how does she know where he lives? Because the story goes that and again, the story comes from his PR people that when she was throwing a birthday party for him, because that's what she did for him because she worships him and who wouldn't want to worship him, that she gave a speech and said that she took matters into her own hands, drove to his house after he failed to call the next day. But then they can't keep the story straight. I, I still to this day, I don't believe that one for a second because she, if they go with the rest of it, she didn't know his address. She get a star map. So then, again, a PR story where they can't keep it straight. When Justin finally did call, when he got done being Justin, when he got back from Liquorville, he called her and she swooned and melted and it wasn't, very long before she decided that she was desperate to marry him you know and she even says she there was thanks everybody for listening i really appreciate it 
you can uh, catch my blog seven days a week, crazydaysandnights.net. Over a hundred posts, updates every single day. Uh, social media, you can find me at NT Lawyer on Instagram and on Twitter. And of course, you can subscribe to Patreon for the full episode at patreon.com backslash NT Lawyer.